morning YouTubers nice to see you all back in the last vlog that I put out I was saying that I'm gonna turn around and go back to Banbury for Christmas but while I've been more there for a couple of weeks I've started to talk myself out of it because you've got all that lovely medieval history in Oxford and I think that would be a lovely place to spend Christmas time. So, what way am I going to go now? Am I going to carry on straight to Oxford? Or turn around and go to Banbury for Christmas? About a hundred yards in front of me at Twyford Wharf there's a winding hull and at that winding hull if I turn I'll be going to Banbury if I go past the winding hull I'll be going to Oxford for Christmas so I'm going to keep you all in suspenders for a minute or so until you see what way I go if I decide to go to Oxford it's going to mean five or six long cruises to get there and going through a lot of nothingness it's not long now the winding hole is coming up just on the right It looks like me and Ashby are going to Banbury for Christmas. But right up until yesterday, I changed my mind and I talked myself into Oxford for Christmas. And I'll tell you what was the clincher. Yesterday, I got some fuel off of Bob from Dusty the Fuel Boat and he was rushing back from Oxford Way. And I asked him about what it was like up there and he said he's rushing back because they was talking of floods on the River Churwell and they was going to chain the locks up and that was what clinched it for me. It might turn out to be a load of cobblers, but I don't want to take the chance. Because there's relatively nothing shop wise between here and Oxford. If I got stuck in the middle of nowhere, I don't have nowhere to buy Christmas presents and things like that. This winding hole is not the best. If I was longer than 50 feet, I'd probably struggle turning the boat here. You'd have to go back and forwards a few times. It's very pointed at the bow end. You can't swing it round. If I swung the bow round properly, the stern of H would hit that more boat. I'm just going to go forward and hopefully the wind will gradually take the bow of H out away from that bank. And it looks like that little plan's working out a tree. Don't always work like that. The 
next obstacle on my journey back to Banbury is that lock that will be coming up soon that I got stuck in last time. I'm having to give it some revs going through this lift bridge because the wind is blowing me hard from the side it's knocking me out of shape a little bit and if I was to go a bit slower it'd blow me all over the place it'd be like pinball going through here on the last vlog when I was going through this area I had a comment saying they had to turn the vlog off because the sound quality was terrible. Problem being, what's making the sound terrible is we're running quite close to the M40 motorway. You can always hear it humming away in the background. I'm sorry but there's not much I can do about that. Right, we're just pulling up to go through that dodgy lock that I got stuck in last time. I was speaking to some other boaters that came through and they actually called out the CRT. So, let's see if it's any better this time. I still couldn't get the gate completely open but it's slightly better than it was. But it definitely needs sorting out permanently, whatever's wrong with it. There's still only about half inch to spare either side, you're coming through that gate there. Honestly, what do I look like? Trousers tucked in me socks. Tramp. I know there's a lot of mud and slime about this time of the year, but I'll have to make a bit more effort, I think. Winter can be a bleak old time living out here on an boat. but if it's freezing cold or snowy, frosty, I love it. But it's when it's damp and bleak and muddy like it is now, it can be a little bit of hard work. But I don't want to sound like I'm complaining because I'm still blessed to live this lifestyle and live out here. We're not too far away from where I was planning to moor up. My plan is to moor up on the outskirts of Banbury stay there for a few days and then move to the centre of Banbury over the Christmas period. These boats moored on the right hand side here are permanent moorings. Just past this green boat here becomes public moorings and there's a space just in front of this grey and blue boat which I'll try and reverse into.
for a boater with no crew, like myself, I always find it easier when I'm going into a gap to moor up to reverse into it because I can jump off the boat and pull it in by the centre line. So I'm struggling a bit there though. Whilst I was moored up here, I lost Ashby for about six hours and I was starting to fear the worst because look at the busy roads around here. But I did track him down eventually and walked miles as well into the bargain. So after the relief of finding Ashby unharmed and spending a few days here now we're going to head for the centre of Banbury and our Christmas holidays I'm completely out of water got toilet cassettes that are full to the brim and I've got bags of rubbish everywhere so I've never needed a facilities point as much as I do now and luckily enough just past all this industrial area there's a facilities point that I can use We're going through an area now that is not the prettiest part of Banbury. Some of it looks a bit decayed and going down the pan a little bit. eventually stop and get moored up I'll show you a little bit of Banbury you can make up your own minds what you think of it well that's the bridge that I've been looking for and I can remember from on the way up here just past this bridge is the services point or the facilities point. It will be a bit of a relief to get these jobs done. Also a bit of bad planning on my part though to let the water completely run out. It's very quiet this morning, there's not many people about. A bit like a ghost town really. When I get to one of these facilities points, always the first job, get the water going, because that's the slowest job, especially if you've got a completely empty water tank. And while that's filling, you can get on with all the other jobs that you've got to do. For those of you that are new to narrowboat channels, you need a special key to get in these places. It's called a BW key or a British Waterways key.
Now for the worst job, emptying out the toilet cassettes. Blech. Where I needed to take on so much water, where it was completely empty. I even had time to help a solo boater through the lock that's in front of us. Now it's my turn to go in the lock. The other boater that I helped out earlier is going to help me. That's how it should be. I'm not trying to be holier than thou, but if people are in what I'd say is the real world or the other type of living they all helped each other out and was considerate it would not make a lot of difference to how things are out there starting from grassroots like that and people are kind and helpful to each other and have got time for each other would spiral and make a lot of difference in my opinion lady that's helping me do the lock has just told me to go back on the boat and she'll do it all. Fantastic. Just the sort of thing that I was talking about. I'm down there so I'll be able to go back looking forward. I think the last time that I saw you, you was walking up to the windmill at Napton. Oh that's right. I went down there. Yeah that's was, right. See your little dog. I found it. I just recognised that lady. We was moored next to each other about three or four months ago in Napton. That's that lady's boat over there on the left. There's another water tap there and she's taking on some water. So she's even going to do the lift bridge for me. There's a bit of wind here that's racing between the buildings and pushing me over. I'm having a right job trying to line it up. Oh no. Looks like the chimney cover's going to get knocked off. Let's hope it lands on the boat. It's like a side wind pushing you across here. Nearly lost the camera as well. Uh, shall I, I'll wait for you there to put your water. Sure, I'll wait. Well, thanks for your help anyway. I offered to pull up over here and do the bridge for the other person there, but she wouldn't have none of it. She says she's going to be a while filling up with water. I tried. We're 
going through the modern town centre of Banbury now. And I find it a little bit soulless or soulless. I wonder what it was like with all the old buildings around here. Perhaps I'll never know now. There's Spice Ball Park coming up on the right and about 100 yards from now I'm going to start looking for somewhere to moor up. Looks like there's uh, enough space to moor up just in front of us. If you look to the right, you can just about see a post. What I've got to do is get the stern of H just past that post because that's where the public mooring starts. There's just enough room here. Ash? Well, this is where we ended up. prettiest place but it will do for now what do you think Ash he's not interested again believe it or not Banbury started off as a market town but there's not much of a market there now it's still got some nice old buildings and a bit of character to the buildings here. But for it being two days before Christmas, there seems a, a lack of people about Christmas shopping. This is a nice old place or an old inn with an apt name. I love the look of these old inns always got like the archway through for the coaches and horses to come in and stable for the nights but this one dates back to the 1500s another old pub that dates to the 1500s the wine house the two most famous things that I associate with Banbury Banbury cakes and a certain nursery rhyme. Ride a cock horse to Banbury Cross to see a fine lady upon a white horse. with rings on her fingers and bells on her toes she shall have music wherever she goes the nursery rhyme dates back to medieval times and it's the fine lady is supposedly Lady Godiva I wonder if people know that nursery rhyme around the world. Let 
me know in the comments if you're from, say, America or somewhere else and you know that nursery rhyme. Apparently, Banbury's been around for 1,500 years. The name derives from Banner, who was a Saxon chief, and Berg, which meant a settlement. So it was Bannerberg, and it's gradually changed to Banbury over the years. As it's getting dark, things are looking a lot more Christmassy around here. This is around the canal side. It's a lot better with the lights on. So there you go. We finally got there. There's a few things I'd like to say to everyone. First of all, I know I've not been the most prolific video maker, but I've got some loyal or a loyal base that's been following me all this time. And I'd like to thank them all very much. I really do appreciate it. And also, I'd like to wish you all and your families a very Merry Christmas. And I'll see you probably in the new year.